Hello everyone, good evening and welcome to Roma Theory as Derossi's extension of contract is only a matter of time as reported by Sky Sports this morning, um, Sky Sports Italy to be more specific and I just want to give my thoughts on this because uh, it is definitely um, a topic which will come up in these next few weeks if not days it's going to be a topic which has already popped up and will continue to pop up in press conferences, in interviews directed to De Rossi. And, um, and the real question here is, why is he still not under a new contract, if I may? If I can add my comment, I would definitely say, well, why are we still waiting? Why aren't we already thinking about this and why are we still postponing this decision because ultimately I've said this the day they would also got appointed if we don't qualify for the Champions League it will not be his fault and therefore I think if you want to build a stable future if you want to start planting the seeds for a new project you have to keep him you have to present a new contract to him and, um, and you have to respect him because, you know, what he's done, the results that he's achieved. But yeah, I think, again, I don't think it's only about results. I think it's also about how he changed this team mentally and how the players completely respect him. And again, people might say, oh, well, he's only respected because it's already the start of his period. Um, he's only respected because he's a club legend and therefore players won't, um, won't have the balls to go against him. And you're absolutely right. But these are things to consider when you look at a manager. The fact that he's a club legend and the fact that Pellegrini knows him really well, played with him. And the fact that being a club legend means that Pellegrini will have to perform at its very best every single time. Because otherwise... If Pellegrini starts turning against De Rossi in the long term, then he knows that the fan base will stick with De Rossi because of the legacy that he has. And Pellegrini will ultimately be burnt down. So I also think that, again, flashing back to, uh, to the day Mourinho got sacked and, and the same day uh, De Rossi was appointed, these are all decisions which the Fredkins asked themselves and went, well, if I need to build a new future... If I need to cover this um, emotional gap of Mourinho leaving, because the Fredkins knew that Mourinho leaving was not going to be a popular option, it was not going to be a popular, the fans weren't going to have a popular reaction. Um, what do we put, who do we put to act as a calm effect? And all of these decisions come together, and we have a manager who is incredibly performing with the team. Uh, he is pulling results which three months ago looked impossible. He is in a top four race which top the, which three months ago looked absolutely impossible. And he has changed players. He's believed in a lot of these players. And what he has done, also on a communication point of view, deserves an extension of contract right now. It deserved an extension of contract on Thursday when we beat Milan away. It deserved an extension contract last weekend. So my question here is, why on earth is he still not being offered a new contract? And again, I don't know. We don't know. I can't know because the Fredkins are this. You just never know. Um, you just never know what they do. They, they might already have a contract. They might, already, they, might, they also might have already signed a new contract and we wouldn't know. So their policy is this. We will know whenever, whenever the official statement will come. But we have to be honest and say that as, as of today, the 13th of April, if you're a Roma fan, you don't want a future without De Rossi and you can't picture a future without De Rossi and you just wouldn't understand why the Fredkins wouldn't, uh, wouldn't offer him a new contract. Uh, but with that little intro, I do want to read a little, um, this little article released by Sky Sports uh, saying how uh, De Rossi's extension is only a matter of time. It's going to happen imminently. Um, so I'm going to read that. And then I also want to um, talk about that and give some news on the sporting director front. Because, of course, managers want thing to, to focus. And it feels like we've, you know, we've, we, we, we've, we've completed it, finding De Rossi. 
Um, it's just giving him that contract. And now the other thing is general director. So I do want to give my, the latest news on that. However, as always, I do want to uh, set a little like target. Uh, guess what I'm going with? My good old friend. I'm insisting with the 100s. With the 100 likes. Um, so it would be great if everybody can hit it, if you're watching live or not. Um, yeah, hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's start with this article. Sky Sports is reliable, in my opinion, because uh, Sky, whoever, basically how Sky Sports works is that every team has correspondents. Every team has specific journalists that focus on that team. Sky Sports Italy is two that I could name that work around the Roma environment every single day. Angelo Mangiante is the one everybody knows about, and the other one is Paolo Sonia. And this article is coming from Paolo Sonia. These are man these are journalists which work in San Trigoria every day of the week. Uh, De Rossi knows Angelo Mangiante. Mourinho created a bond with Angelo Mangiante. So I really trust them. And, uh, and Sky Sports is a generally reliable source. But this is the article that, they are, that they've written. We are only waiting for the renewal for De Rossi. There isn't a single reason not to start thinking about planning the future with him. The interpretation of the derby and the victory in Milan are the latest signs of an excellent job so far. A solid and excellently organized team capable of creating the right thing um, at zero risk. Not even an opportunity left to Lazio in the derby and only a crossbar hit by Giroud in the Europa League game against Milan. Um, in matches also characterised by correct behaviour. 90 minutes with character and intensity, avoiding falling into hysterical, counterproductive attitudes. Game and nervous system always in control. Fourth place within reach. Um, one leg into the semi-final of the Europa League. It is the snapshot of a period strongly characterised by the qualities of the young coach. As a football man who is always up to date, he is confirming that he's absolutely in tune with the principles of modern football, where the coach must be good at finding the synthesis between his ideas and the characteristics of the players. Always in the interpretation of different moments of the match. Not finding Daniele De Rossi on the Roma bench at the start of next season would be a very difficult choice to understand. And may I add myself, it would be also very criminal. So um, that's basically saying that it's a ma it's a matter of um, it's a matter of time. It's imminent. It's going to happen. Um, it's going to happen. I think for two reasons. If you're Dan Fredkin, I think it's two reasons you look, and two reasons you analyze, and two reasons which you base yourself on when extending him the contract. The number one is results. You know, these are results. The fact that he's only lost two games against Inter and a useless game against Brighton, that it's a loss, but it's not a loss. So I don't look, I don't pay attention at that game. The only game that we lost was against Inter. The fact that we, three months ago, were what, ninth? And three months later, were three points from fourth? And people will say, always, people will always say this, people will continue to say, well, wait and see until De Rossi completes this calendar of tough games. Absolutely right. But if the team plays like they played against Thursday, I can guarantee you that we have the chance of winning every single game from now until the end of the season. It's about, it's about finding that consistency. But I am convinced that if this team plays like they played on Thursday, we can beat Bologna, we can beat Milan again, we can beat Udinese tomorrow, we can beat Juventus at home. Because that attitude on Thursday is a golden attitude to have at San Siro, not even at the Olympico, because we're, we're used to the ecstasy that the Olympico creates. Um, so, so, yeah. That is very important to understand. Results are impressive. Not, second reason, empathy with players. You've got players who are releasing their own interviews. Whether it's an interview post-game, whether it's an interview uh, for their country's newspaper. I know this happened a few weeks ago during the international break with Cristante. Cristante released a, a personal interview to Il Corriere dello Sport where he said, we want a future with De Rossi. You've got Dybala. 
in last game's press conference saying, I would love to continue with De Rossi. I also think Lukaku is a player who's loving life, Andre De Rossi, and wants to stay. Lukaku won't publicly say that he wants to stay because he's already made this mistake very, uh, you know, m multiple times. Um, so he's not going to say it publicly, but deep down Lukaku, again, I can, I can guarantee you he wants to stay. Uh, you've got players revitalised from Pellegrini to Chilik um, to Smalling. You've got players that you've, you've, given, you've given value to. I look at Zvilor. I look at other players that you revitalised. I look at Spinazzola. This is a team which three months ago look, look, looked lost. And I'm a Roma fan. I've been following every single Roma game for the past, what, 18 years. Speak about Roma every day. And I can tell you that three months ago I was not positive. Nobody was positive. Because the divisions and the leaks in this changing room were big. They were big. And De Rossi came, gave faith to a lot of these players. Gave faith to a lot of them in a sense that he believes in these players. Something which Mourinho didn't do. And no doubt, if you start believing and giving faith to your own players, they will start performing. And then, you know, discoveries. Zvilar is a masterclass. It, that, that's a DDR masterclass. So that's another thing. And then the third thing is, as this article said very, very well, um, 90 minutes with character and intensity, avoiding falling into hysterical and counterproductive attitudes. This is deep down one of the most important things that the Fredkins are looking at because of their policy because of their policy towards their brand and their merchandise, you can't tolerate toxic attitudes. You can't tolerate a manager getting one red card every three games. You can't tolerate your vice captain Mancini starting a fight every time he gets booked. These are things that, from, from a fan's point of view, of course you look at them, but it's not where you look. From an ownership point of view, this is the first thing you, this is the first thing you look. What do, what do those attitudes bring? Because, you know, one thing is, well, those attitudes, that aggressive attitude that Mancini had three months ago, that Mourinho had, uh, that Pellegrini sometimes also had, rarely, but sometimes, you know, that attitude of red cards starting fights, what did that bring? Because you've got teams who are like that. You've got teams who are like that, but win games and are incredible teams. But you look at that attitude in those games and you look, what does that bring? I'm losing games. And number two, I'm not only worsening my relationship with the referees, but I'm also worsening my image. I'm making my image a toxic image. So that was what that was. I'm not going to say the most important reason, but the second most important reason as to why Mourinho got sacked. So, I think De Rossi fulfills and it is eligible for every single criteria that the Fredkins want. With that being said, it's only a matter of time. I cannot see a future without De Rossi. I'm being very honest with you. I can't see us starting all over again. I can't see us planning a season all over again. I can't see us finding a manager all over again and wanting to sign his players. I can't see it happen when De Rossi is doing so well. I could have pictured it if De Rossi wouldn't have worked out. But he's, he's working out so well that it would be disrespectful to the fans who want him and public opinion will be big and himself who is performing very, very well lately. Um, but again, with that being said, manager, I think 99% it's done. Unless the Fredkins wake up with... With, with a nervous attitude and a nervous break and a mental breakdown and they decide to not extend this contract, I think 99% of their managers sort out, sort it out. The other big thing, face is the general director. Again, similar to what I was saying before. There are people who say that the general director is already there, but the Fredkins won't announce him because they want to wait and they don't want to distract and pull the media out of this great moment of football and bringing it into internal stuff. That could be the case. You just never know with this ownership. Uh, they, they will catch you under surprise every single time you believe in something. So the latest news, however, is that the general director could be, the director of football 
could be somebody who is already part of the Roma Void and has been part of the Roma Void since 2021. I am speaking about this guy called uh, Jose Fontes. This is somebody who came to Roma in 2021 and worked around the scouting department. And the latest rumors are that he could be the guy who, from a useless scout, could turn, could turn into an official director of football. Now, um, I don't like this. I don't. I'll be very honest. This is who he is. Jose Fontes has been registered inside of the Rome organization as an observer. He arrived in Rome in 2021, replacing Ricardo Form Formosino, former collaborator of Jose Mourinho at Tottenham. Fontes, as things currently stand, could be in pole position for the role of a sporting director of football. The Lusitanian has a past as a responsible chief scout at Leicester. There are many reasons as to why I don't want this. Number one, I truly believe that if the decision was made to sack Mourinho, his staff members should also be sacked with him. I believe this because I think if this guy came in 2021 with Mourinho and Mourinho and the team had disagreements in the latest period, I believe that the team also wouldn't tolerate Mourinho's staff. So there were still some individuals that were part of Mourinho's staff, which we kept. The 80% of Mourinho's staff was sacked with him, but there are some individuals which stayed. I don't like that. I think if we have to restart from fresh, with Thiago Pinto obviously gone, we have to restart from fresh. Um, and I don't think we need to, should keep these names which have been here for the past. Number two, if you're telling me that he, that he was an observer at Roma since 2021, then my counter argument is, oh, what a shit observer you are. Because if you're telling me that this guy's a scout that has worked for us for the past three years, and this guy has scouted the likes of Christensen, the likes of Renato Sanchez, the likes of Awar, then he, he truly isn't a good scout. So why do we need to keep the rotten pieces when we can completely change stuff? And those are the reasons why I don't think... And again, I've got, I've got nothing against Portugal. Portugal, great country. Um, but I think we need to reduce this Portuguese influence. We need to reduce this Portuguese influence because, again, nothing against Portugal. This is not discriminatory against Portugal. But we've had too many Portuguese names lately and they haven't worked out. Um, you know, they just haven't worked out. We had Thiago Pinto and it, and it didn't work out. We have Mourinho, who obviously is the one who worked out the most for the for the first two seasons, but then all of these, all of these, you know, all of this Portuguese influence from Rui Patricio to Thiago Pinto to this guy to Mourinho's last three months as their own manager, yeah, let's just clear and restart. We've got the chance to plant the seeds for a long term project. Why do we need to keep the scraps of a project which didn't work out? Because it didn't work out. Because, you know, Thiago Pinto didn't really work out. The staff around Thiago Pinto also didn't really work out. Because apart from a great Dybala signing and a great Lukaku signing and a great Matic signing last year and a good Paredes signing this year, what did they bring? They spent, what, 18 million on Shimarodov and 14 million on Vina. They spent, they, they got Christensen, they got players. The only, the only, the only big transfer market hit that they got right was Zvilor. That was a really good one because that was an expected one and that shows you scouting quality. The likes of Renato Sanchez and all of those signings were atrocious. So yeah. Uh, good evening guys, I'm going to listen while driving. I would not want to miss any of your videos, especially when room flying so high, when Roma flying so high. I appreciate it mate, but do drive safe. Um, the, there are rumors of Israel Reyes joining us. I haven't heard, I, I don't know who he is. Uh, what's up, Chris? Hello, mate. Good to see you again. Good to see you too, mate. 
What I see here is not just the possibility for the title and UCL slot, but the potential for growing and the strategy for development. That's why we need to sign BDR. Random question, but what's your height? I'm uh, 177. Yeah, 177. One meter 77. I'm, I'm not that tall. I'm not short, but I'm not tall. Uh, we will win UEL. I'm scared of Leverkusen. I'm scared too, mate. There is no need to focus about fear and thinking about lifting that trophy now. We've got Milan on Thursday. The priority should be that. And we shouldn't be scared because if we want to win that trophy, we need to beat by Leverkusen. So scared, no scared. You will, let, you will have to face them. Mm. Are you talking about the... Le I like Elsha on the right. Allows him to cross with his strong foot. I can't watch tomorrow's match because Iran are trying to destroy my country. Yikes. Uh, prayers to you, mate. Did Foti leave, says Nissan? Yes, he did. Hello, Flyerbam. We'll be in top four, not top five. And Marlenito, hello from Albania. Hello from, um, hello from Rome. Love the support. Right, lads, I'm going to end it here. A uh, little, little stream about the update on C and uh, internal issues, director of football. Who will it be? Guesses down below. And also let me know in the comments your thoughts on uh, De Rossi being on the verge of signing a new contract and only being a matter of time, as reported by Sky Sports. I'll catch you tomorrow for the live watch along of the Udinese game. Um, it's also my dad's birthday tomorrow, so um, hopefully Roma win. Great gift for him. Um, hit the like. 100 likes would be absolutely amazing. Subscribe to Roma Theory. Follow Roma Theory TV on Instagram and uh, my personal Instagram down below. And um, talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Simo, out. Oh, look, look, look at this lovely golden hour. It's a lovely day in Rome. It's a lovely day in Rome. It's so hot, lads. It's incredible. It's the 13th of April and it's like 30 degrees in Rome. Uh, yeah, it is crazy. But it's also nice. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. Summer is coming. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.